What is up Smack Empire, Smack Empire here, back again with another Dark Deception video. Today we're going to take a look at all Chapter 4 ballroom dialogues, such as Malak's audio lines and Beerus's audio lines from Chapter 4, and theorize as to where this story is heading towards, and also what we should expect from both these characters, as well as our main protagonist in this story. As always, thanks to Angelo for the audio, and thanks to you guys for insane support. Now let's get on with the video. We talked about this in the last video as well, where we went into small details as to what this ballroom means and what is Beers doing here with Powers and us. I would highly recommend you to watch that video first, but let's get on into the details here. Firstly, we need to understand our relationship with Beers herself. As learning from the story for Dark Deception, we are dead, or at least half dead, and we want a new start, a new life, and through her help and through her powers, she can fulfill all our desires. This ball room is her world. It represents her control, her powers, and her character. She's the one that can manipulate powers, fears around here, because it is her world after all. But here's an interesting thing. She still doesn't have entire control in all of this. This ballroom has portals. Portals that takes you to nightmare abyss, dark depth into terrifying endless maze of doom, death, and destruction. Whatever happens within the ballroom might be under her control, but as soon as you step outside, her control begins to fade away slowly. These portals are doorstep to another world, something that has been lived in the past and became a memory. A dark memory. A memory you don't want to live again, but desperately have to. Beers wants full control, not just within ballroom, but outside of that as well. Hence, Ring Altar and Ring Pieces comes into play. Ring Altar is basically the heart of all powers within Beers' world. And the more power Ring Altar gets, the more it'll give you back, making you more powerful. But to make it powerful, you have to give it something. And that is Ring Pieces. Ring Pieces are scattered around those portals nightmare portals. With each ring piece, not only you're giving it more powers, getting more powers in return, but also making beers powerful as well. Something that's kind of concerning story-wise. But it's not that easy. There's another character, an entity that's been the focal point apart from beers. Someone that's making it harder for beers to become powerful. Someone that has control outside these ballroom areas and in these portals. Someone that has all those ring pieces and you've already guessed who that is. Malak is definitely a really interesting character, to say the least. He's been here from the first time we went into the portal. He's been here the first time we've been in the ballroom. He's been in all levels, chapters, nightmares, and portals. And it seems like there's a history or relationship between Malak and Beers. So one thing's for sure, Malak is not an ordinary character. He's really important. He's someone that story is constantly pushing as this huge threat around Beers and us. Malak has had really interesting lines from telling us that don't trust Beers to don't mess with the things you have no knowledge of. Obviously, people will see Malak as this demon who's bloodthirsty and just wants to kill and make his way, and to some extent, it's true. However, there's more to him than that. He seems to have connection with literally every character, monster that we have faced yet, from Agatha all the way to Duckies. Why is he so concern. Well, it's because the ring pieces that we're collecting belongs to Malak in the first place. I said it in the last video as well, both Beers and Malak are working actively on rituals, whether it's be against each other or to get more powers, more control, or for other reason. Reasons that we'll discuss in some other video, but for now, Malak possesses so many powers. It's just that we haven't seen one yet. He's terrifying, I'll give him that. And he's got a really scary animation when he's chasing you, so that's that. Overall, Malak and Beers Beers are two cult leaders fighting against each other to gain more control because they have control and powers in their worlds, but they want more than that. And that is why we as player, as protagonist, as main character is really important for both of them. For Beers, we're her way to get all control and become more powerful. And for Malak, it's important for him that we stay away from his ring pieces and his portals, his nightmares, so he doesn't lose all control to Beers, who almost seems like his rival at this point, but that was in the previous chapters, in the past. Where are we right now in this rivalry and what awaits us for the future? 
This is going to be an interesting one, so stay with me. We're only going to stay within chapter 4, as in 6 to 8 levels, dialogues, or interactions between Malik and Beers. This is going to be a future spoiler, so you're warned. But before we get into that, we need to have some context as to where we are in terms of story. We have successfully completed Crazy Carmen Evil, specifically chapter 3. Chapter 3 showed a very different side to Malik. Almost seems like he's desperate to stop us. We saw his appearance and how he's in control of all all the monsters and enemies in this world. But chapter 3 left us on a very interesting note. Let's take a look at it, shall we? He's right. I am getting more powerful. Powerful enough to fulfill your every wish. That's why you're here, isn't it? Beers. Why not tell him what fate befell the last person that trusted you? Now this could be taken as Malik's desperate attempts to talk and make a way out for himself so that we could stop trusting Beers and stop giving her more control, eventually making her more powerful. But if there's anything I've learned in this game is that Malik is brutally honest. He doesn't care for who's facing him, who's who and what's what, because he believes he's immortal. That's why he calls us mortal, inferior, which we might probably be. But this shows that as much as Malik is not to be trusted because he's demon and owes scary terrifying nightmarish powers he might be telling the truth. Remember what he said in the end? And no response from Beers made it even more concerning. Are we doing the right thing by trusting Beers? I mean, she's going to fulfill our desires, after all, all of them, but at what cost? What is she going to do once she's done with us? Once she finally becomes powerful? Well, let's analyze things a bit more here, shall we? I've played this audio in my last video as well, where we went into details as to what this audio hints towards future powers, what's going to happen with power overall, but we didn't talk about Malik's response to this, what happened here, what were the interaction between them. We need to get that soul shard to get the gate open. Naturally, it's behind those bars. Well, if Malik won't let us get to the shard, we'll have to make the orb come to us. I just need to make a few more changes to your brain. Don't worry. If you start to feel dizzy, or you start to smell colors, just take a deep breath and wait for it to pass. If it doesn't pass, quit whining and get used to it. I'm a movie star, not a brain surgeon. Mortal, you're messing with things you know nothing about. Malik's response was super different. It has never happened before. It almost seems like he's giving up as in realizing that he might not be able to control all of this and we might just go all the way. This might make him more aggressive, aggressive than ever before. His anger against us and beers will no doubt going to increase as well as making it harder for players to not only beat him but it would become hard to even avoid him. But there's something in me that tells me that there's some truth in Malik's words. Sure, beers is helping us, she's doing all of this and no no doubt she will fulfill our desires, all of them, but what if he's telling the truth? What if once Beers becomes powerful and gets complete control over everything he betrays us, as this is part of her ritual after all? Something she's been failed a thousand times before, but how do we know this was, is, an ongoing attempt at this? This is where level 7 comes in, or Joy Joy Mascots levels comes in. This is where things will start to get more aggressive. Levels, monsters, powers, mechanics, all of it. Beers will need to give some more aggressive powers to avoid Malak's traps and monsters to get those last remaining ring pieces. Level 7 is what I've been predicting to be the hardest level in entire Dark Deception thus far. Maybe harder than Deadly Decadence. But unlike last time, when Malak was just concerned that maybe will become a threat, he's now more than sure that we are a threat now and he's making measures to make sure we don't mess with him ever again next thing you know he'll be pleading with you that's because he's losing soon the ring will be mine again three pieces left you want a new start a better life i can give that to you all that and more malik thinks he's being clever now he's got a camera watching the entrance to keep you from getting past does he think I'm not capable of making you invisible whenever I want? Or shrinking you to the size of a cockroach? Or turning you into a cockroach if I so desire? Well, I'll show him. Return to the ring altar. Fair warning, this might hurt a bit. Oh, I won't be here long. I just want to have a private talk with your friend here. 
Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. And I mean a lot. Firstly, Malak is becoming more aggressive than ever before. He's furious with us. That's why he's taken those measures, such as installing security cameras and lasers to keep us out. Unfortunately for him though, Beers got a solution to that as well. Secondly, like I said earlier, Beers is almost shocked to see us making it all the way, kinda. It almost as if she tried a thousand times but failed. However, this is her only chance to make it count. Hence, she's helping us with those powers and making sure that we get all those ring pieces, all of them. Finally, Malak's final lines are very concerning here. He says, let's hear it again. Oh, I won't be here long. I just want to have a private talk with your friend here. Now, this is very concerning. Either he's found out a way to get out of his world and start entering ours, or he's found a way to stop us. It seems like, and it could go both ways, he managed to come out, or at least he managed to get some of himself into our world, Beers' world, or he's realized that we are more special than Beers to him. The line of private talk with your friend could go both ways. Either he's referring friend to Beers, our friend, since he does talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, or he's talking to Beers about us, that he wants to talk to us. Remember, he can't enter this world, it's Beers' world, but things turn around very quickly, and I mean very, very quickly. Impossible! You can't be here! I forbid it! It seems like it happened. What we were afraid of, it happened. Malak has found a way to invade us in Beers' world. Hence, Beers' tone suggests that he was not supposed to be here, or at least that's what I'm assuming. Now, you might be wondering that this isn't true. Malak can't get in here. Well, let me take you all the way back to pre chapter two times when things were innocent. Glowstick Entertainment themselves, and the people behind Dark Deception, made a devlog where they talked about so many things regarding the game. And in one of those moments, Malak was there too, in the ballroom. And it seems like it's it's been planned already. Take a look. Completely rebuilding the game in Unreal Engine. So there's a lot to show and It seems like Malak will invade Ballroom and is going to destroy everything in here, or at least he will try to. That is why Chapter 5 seems to be very promising to have a Malak boss battle. But going back to original point, he's slowly finding ways to overturn this, to turn this against us, to find a way to stop using beers taking control away from him, like I said earlier, for himself or for our own good. But here is my prediction. Chapter 4 ending will set up a scene where it'll hint towards having a choice between going with Malak or still trusting Beers and if that happens, it would literally make this game 10 times better than before and you know this game is already amazing on its own. I cannot say enough thanks to everyone out there and Angelo for everything. Keep supporting and we'll be at 15,000 in no time. I'm planning to do face cam videos once we cross 15 or 20,000 subs so if anyone's interested in that. Dark Dark Deception will go down as one of the best indie games of all time in history, or at least in my book. And seriously, this game not only has a long past history, but has a great bright light future. Unlike its story and their name, Dark Deception, what lies ahead in the dark realm of nightmarish portals and their shadows, we shall find out in chapter 4 very soon. With that being said, that would do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to give it a like and share your thoughts down in the comments. I upload videos almost every single day, so don't hesitate to share your opinions on what should I do next. And I'll see you soon. Until then, take care and peace. Someone said piss. Okay, that was a funny one.